soy estadounidense. Me amarqui hun. Fushi megoren. Je suis American. Me meni American. Ahana Americani. I am an American. One of the great honors that I get to experience with the honor of serving as a public official and specifically now the congressman from Virginia's 5th District is the opportunity to address young people. Uh, there are 40 high schools in the 5th Congressional District that are public. Our goal is to get to every public high school every year. And one of the things that I tell the young people with whom I speak is that the odds of being born in this nation are 1 in 26. 1 in 26. The odds of becoming a citizen of this nation via the route that you, my 27 new brothers and sisters, and I mean that, uh, have traveled are far, far, far smaller. In life, very little is guaranteed. In America, when our nation functions as it should, I believe there are two guarantees, two entitlements, and the first is that you were entitled as an American to an opportunity. You were entitled as an American to an opportunity. And in America, unlike unfortunately so much of the rest of the world, number two, you are entitled to determine what success is for yourself. Within the Jeffersonian construct of liberty that says that my freedom extends until it begins to encroach upon that of someone else, if it's your dream to become the best beekeeper that you can be in America, you can dream and live that dream. To become an entrepreneur, to be an amazing stay-at-home father, to be an attorney, to be an advocate on behalf of those less, than, less fortunate than yourself. In America, you're entitled to an opportunity to do it and you can define that success for yourself. And every one of you, my new brothers and sisters, understands this because you went through incredible efforts, each with your own story, to sit here today. America, to me, is a nearly flawless idea founded by flawed people. Jefferson, when he drafted the Declaration of Independence, spoke of fundamental rights that all people had, influenced by Locke and by Hobbes and by Newton. Jefferson understood that the Locke concept was that all people were entitled to life, liberty, and property. And yet Jefferson was a slaveholder in a land where he recognized that we were far yet from perfect. And so as he drafted that declaration, he amended the concepts of Locke to include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness because he understood that that way, as we move forward as a nation and we strove to become a more perfect union, we wouldn't allow individuals to justify the possession of another, another human being by saying, oh, but I'm entitled to property. So even within the flaws of the founders, the flawless documents allowed us a pathway forward. And if you look at the American Declaration of Independence, at the American Constitution, if you look right here in Virginia at the House of Delegates, the longest continually serving, democratically elected, deliberative body on the planet Earth from 1619 to present, you understand that while we were flawed, we had a vehicle in those flawless ideas to always be moving closer to that more perfect union. The framework over 230 plus or minus years is almost unchanged. And the opportunity for people of color and for women who had not the right to vote when these documents were drafted has extended over time without revolution, and without rewriting the documents based on the ideas that were nearly flawless and that today you become a part of and a standard bearer for. In America, we celebrate the ultimate minority. That minority is the individual. That every person has value and that every person has a right to make decisions for themselves again so long as their decisions don't encroach upon the liberty of others. Indeed, it is the hope of our nation that every American have the opportunity to change the world, to change the world. The capacity for greatness amongst you, my 27 new brothers and sisters, is without limit and without bound. And your ability to achieve greatness is already demonstrated by the fact that you sit here today. 
Untold millions throughout history have aspired to become Americans and have died before they earned that right. You have achieved that. And if you don't believe that every single individual American can change the world, let me go back through a little bit more history with you because we stand here today near the home of Patrick Henry, a hero of mine. And a county removed from the home of Barbara Johns, another hero of mine. So briefly, let me tell you their stories. You heard earlier Patrick Henry's famous words, I, ask not what, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. And from the back of the room, Someone shouted, treason, which meant get a rope and hang it. He's betrayed the crown. And my favorite part of the Henry speech was, if this be treason, make the most of it. Patrick Henry declared that some values were so important that one should be willing to lay down their life for those values. And in Henry's time, that value was liberty from an oppressive crown. Fast forward to the early 1950s and a young African-American girl, Barbara Johns, one county from here, who sat at the dinner table with her family and her uncle, Vernon Davis, who discussed the Declaration of Independence and natural law ideals that all people, regardless of the color of their skin, their faith, their gender, were equal. And Johns, a 16-year-old student, questioned why then was it that there was a brand new school in Prince Edward County that served only white students while African-American students were forced into the R.R. Moton High School where overflow were pushed into essentially what were the equivalent of barns or outbuildings with wood stoves. And so in that time when it very really, realistically might have cost her her life, over a thousand Americans died during the Civil Rights Movement to include riots, etc. A 16-year-old girl took the stage at R.R. Moton High School and spoke to her classmates and said, we are all equal and entitled to the same rights under God and let a walk out from the high school that was the only of five cases amalgamated into the Brown versus Board of Education decision initiated by a student. I like to tell young people when I talk to them, the difference between Barbara Johns and Patrick Henry wasn't what they did. Both found something important enough to stand up and fight for and conceivably die for. It was that Patrick Henry was a 37-year-old lawyer and Barbara Johns was a 16-year-old girl. But in both instances, one person, one American, change the world. It's such a humbling opportunity to serve the 5th Congressional District because I tell people it is the best, the most historical congressional district in the nation. To give you an idea, Thomas Jefferson lived here. The first race for the 5th Congressional District seat in Virginia was a race between James Madison and James Monroe. The two companions traveled together and when Madison won the seat, he recommended that Monroe be appointed to the United States Senate. I'd like to see that collegiality return to politics. The United States, the American Civil War ended here, and the American Civil Rights Movement in Virginia began here. And now you are us, my brothers and sisters, we're all the same, and this is an amazing place to be from. Understand that history because it gives you sort of a responsibility to carry it forward. So we stand here near the home of Patrick Henry, who was the son of an immigrant. In a nation that's free, arguably, and would not be, but for immigrants, Kosciuszko from Poland, Lafayette from France, von Steuben from what would become Germany. In fact, immigrants who've changed America, who've changed the world, are too many for me to name. Let me give it a little run, though. Ayn Rand, Nikola Tesla, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Albert Einstein, Kito Oiju, who's the chief of NASA, Ahmed Zawal, Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize for Chemistry. Natalie Komenich, former Secretary, St Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. In fact, in the Forbes 400, which tracks the most, the wealthiest 400 Americans, you're more than twice as likely to be included on that list if you came to America than if you were born in America. And I believe the reason for that is that the challenges that you've already overcome to be sitting here on this day demonstrate the strength and depth of your character. No pressure, we expect great things. <laughs> So anyone who comes here and earns citizenship has already cleared a huge hurdle. You've done that. Again, untold millions of people dreamed of being Americans and never made it through that challenge. I would ask you, as did Judge Moon, to consider these things as you discharge your duties of citizenship. And I will get a little bit more abstract and conclude than, than, than what he overlaid. I believe the duty of Americans, all Americans, 
is to preserve a nation where an individual, any individual, is guaranteed an opportunity. We work every day to make it more of an equal opportunity. We're not there yet, but guaranteed an opportunity to succeed and to define for themselves success. Literally millions of Americans from Antietam to Gettysburg, Manila to Seoul, Rome to Berlin have died to free others and to perpetuate that opportunity here at home. And so your duty, as I see it, is to do what's needed to ensure that a hundred years from now, somewhere near here, another group of people who dreamed like you did is offered the same opportunity that you're offered here today. You are my brothers and sisters. Sometimes you don't like your brothers and sisters. Sometimes you don't vote for your brothers and sisters, but you're my American brothers and sisters. And I started with, I am an American in I think the seven most common languages uh, of immigrants to America now. I apologize if I missed you. And I'm gonna end with this. Somos Americanos. Om Ameriki I. Vumen shi me goran. Nusom American. Sisi ni American. Nahana Americayum. We are Americans. God bless you and welcome.